Did you know that Stranger Things has some badass moments? And like all badass scenes, these scenes usually have terrible and sometimes downright hilarious secrets behind them. For example, did you know that the first Demogorgon was some guy in a monster suit? Well, you probably didn't, but now you do. So today, we're gonna be taking a look at some badass moments from Stranger Things. But first, a simple reminder on how to enter our brand new giveaway. We are giving away either an iPhone X Max, the new iPad mini or MacBook Pro. It's all your choice. So be sure to leave a like, comment the keyword, subscribe, and turn on notifications to enter the giveaway. It's really that simple. Dustin's condition. Have you heard Dustin speak? Yeah, it's super cute. Sometimes. Other times it sounds like nails on a school board. There are no in-betweens. But you probably didn't know that this isn't an act. Dustin's character is played by Gaten Matarazzo, and Matarazzo has a condition called cleidocranial dysplasia. This is a condition that affects bone and teeth development, and it's the reason why Matarazzo has no front teeth. Matarazzo suffers from a mild form of this condition, so his speech pattern isn't his fault. But did you know that the Duffer Brothers wrote in the condition for Dustin in the series as well? Yeah, they decided that Dustin would suffer from that condition just because Matarazzo suffered from it as well. So every time you saw Dustin speaking in that weird manner that he does, know that it's Dustin speaking, not Matarazzo. Yeah, weird, but it's true. Kiri's condition, sort of. If you've watched the third season of Stranger Things, you'd already know that Steve has gone through a pretty satisfying character arc. He's one of the gang now, and he's now the sad but pathetic hot mess the rest of the gang are. But Steve wasn't meant to be like that. When the idea for Steve was first proposed, it was decided that he would remain the stereotypical bully for the entire series. But all that changed when the Duffer Brothers met Joe Keery, the actor who played Steve. According to them, Keery was so lovable that they decided to allow Steve to evolve a bit. After writing Steve's little evolution, they liked the result and decided that it would be nice for him to have a full arc. So whenever you see Steve beating someone up or generally being a bully, know that that's what he was meant to do for the entire of the series until he met the producers. Mike and Eleven's season two kiss. First off, it's no secret that the romantic and kissing moments in Stranger Things were stressful and intense for everyone involved. For example, Millie Bobby Brown said that her first kiss was actually on set, right in front of the cameras. <laughs> That's right. Since most of the protagonists are teenagers, we expect nothing less. Can you remember how intense and awkward and weird your first few kisses were? Now imagine it being in front of tens of people, cameras, and lights. Exactly. Right now, we'll be discussing one badass scene in particular, Mike and Eleven season two kiss. It was at the snowball and it was supposed to be this big and romantic scene. And to be fair, it was for all of us sitting at home and watching it. It wasn't exactly that for the actor and actress acting it though. Finn, the actor who played Mike, told Millie Bobby Brown that he was coming in just seconds before he sealed the kiss. We don't know about you, but that's not what we call romance at all. <laughs> that would almost be the opposite of romance, but we can't deny that it looked nice on camera. Max and Lucas's kiss. Do you know what's worse than having your first few kisses ever in front of a crowd of people? Well, waking up, not knowing you're gonna have a kiss in front of a crowd of people, getting to the location and discovering you're going to do it. Yeah, that's objectively worse. And it's exactly what happened to Max and Lucas. Sadie Sink, the actress who played Max, and Caleb McLaughlin, the actor who played Lucas, didn't know they were gonna kiss on the day that they kissed. It had not been written in the script. For months and months, they had practiced their lines, but an important aspect had been missing out. They were going to have a kiss. Sadie was pretty vocal about the awkwardness of everything, she had this to tell us. It was not written in the script. The kiss wasn't written in the script. I got there the first day of filming the snowball and I'm like, what? No, that's not in the script. That's not happening. That's not happening, she said, but we all know that it indeed happened. Sorry, Sadie, it happened and it was amazing for everyone watching at home at least. Yes, she shaved her hair. When we were first introduced to Eleven, she was a small shifty kid with a bald head and a clinic gown or something. She bled through her nose and looked very disturbed to say the least. It's easy to think that most of that act was brought to life by CGI, and in a way, you would be correct, but other aspects were real too. For one, Millie Bobby Brown shaved her head. What you saw wasn't an effect of a bald cap and CGI. It was 100% real. However, the production team of the series eventually had to use a bald cap and CGI for 11. In season two, Millie had grown out her hair into long brown curls, so she had to make use of bald caps and CGI to act the flashback scenes that littered the entire season too. But someone else wore a wig. If you were asked to guess who'd have cause to wear a wig in the entire series, you may have come up with some pretty obvious answers. For example, you might say it has to be Steve, and we'd understand. Come on, look at that long and luxurious hair. That surely cannot be real. It's too long, too wavy, and honestly, too good looking to be real. Having such amazing hair
here should be a crime. But no, it's not Steve. There's someone else with a wig in the series, and it's Will, the character embodied by Noah Schnapp. When Noah was first cast as Will, the plan was simple, to try to make his hair into that natural bowl cut look. But that plan failed because unlike Steve's actor, Joe Keery, Noah doesn't have long, luxurious hair. Instead, he has regular, plain old hair. To fix this problem, the production team decided that they would fashion a wig for Noah. So yes, Noah wears a wig throughout every single shot of Stranger Things. You wouldn't have guessed that, would you? The secret behind the demo dog junkyard shot? The demo dog junkyard shot is probably the scariest scene in the entire series. But it couldn't have been as good as it was without some tweaking. Sean Levy, the director of several episodes in the series and one of the producers of the show, says that he often played eerie music during shooting if he wanted the young actress to get into character. According to him, playing eerie music on set is just one way to get actors into the mood of what you're looking for. And that does make a lot of sense. For example, gangsters on the way to beating someone up wouldn't listen to Ariana Grande or Celine Dion. They'd listen to Eminem or Marshall Mathers. And that's exactly what Sean Levy tried to achieve with the creepy scenes that he directed. After a while, other Stranger Things directors like Andrew Stanton decided to take after Sean Levy. That's why we can confirm that the Demodog junkyard scene was acted with eerie music playing in the background. And it wasn't just regular eerie music. It was the score from Close Encounters of the Third Kind. The breakfast scene was improvised. When Nancy and Jonathan went to meet Murray at his cabin, they ended up having breakfast together. In one scene, Murray asked Jonathan about the pullout, a question that was supposed to be a double entendre and a reference to Nancy's and Jonathan's love life. At the end of the conversation, Murray tries to put his spoon in his mouth and mistakenly drops some eggs. Afterwards, he says, oops, another reference to the pullout joke he had made earlier. The thing about the scene was that it was improvised. In fact, at the end of the scene, you can see Natalie Dyer starting to laugh. You wouldn't have guessed that, would you? Millie Bobby Brown was exhausted in that scene. In Stranger Things 3, episode 4, Eleven had a badass showdown with bad boy Billy, an anti-hero who had become possessed by a monster. After the epic fight in the gym, Eleven collapsed in the arms of Mike. What most people didn't know is that that wasn't in the script. And it wasn't an improvisation either. Millie Bobby Brown was simply exhausted from acting for so long. Yes, even actresses get tired. After all, acting isn't easy work. Yes, we know it looks easy, but it really isn't. If it were, everyone would do it. A dummy, Will? In the final episode of season two, Will Byers undergoes an exorcism of sorts. Well, he underwent what we imagine a real life exorcism would look like. The entire process had a lot of shaking and nudging and Will even got stabbed by a fire poker. Well, Noah Schnapp, the actor who plays Will Byers, didn't find the idea of getting stabbed by a fire poker, even in pretend, attractive. That's why a fake corpse was used for the scene. And yes, it was the same fake corpse used for the first season of the series. Well, friends, that's it. These are the secrets behind the most badass moments of Stranger Things. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.